Welcome back for our next daily devotion. Today's devotion is on day two of creation. So we begin and pick it up in verse six. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven and there was evening and there was morning the second day. Okay, so uh, that was from the ESV, so it might have sounded a little kind of chunky there or rough um, because they were trying to be hyper-literal. Usually there's a canopy and an expanse and, and all manner of stuff. So uh, what's going on here is kind of twofold. One, there's a pun um, because the word for waters is Mayim and the word for heaven is Shemayim. So we're just kind of doing a rhyming kind of punny thing. Again, this is helping those with the... Um, oral tradition, oral history, tell and learn to memorize it. It's not that this didn't happen, it's that we have artistic license as we write out what happens to do fun things like that, to make it easier to remember, to tell a good story. Again, not that it didn't happen exactly this way, just we were a little more poetic with it. So there's that pun and the play on words and the Mayim and the Shemayim, and we're getting separated out. Um, what's also happening here is that uh, in Hebrew, the word Mayim, the waters or ocean, uh, is a, another word for not just ocean, but for chaos. Right, and here we are thinking of the Atlantic, not the Pacific Ocean and its orderly nice waves, but real tempestuous wave action uh, that you would see out on the real ocean. They have a word for that, an understanding of, of just how chaotic being on the high seas could be um, because they can see the Mediterranean and they, they know all about that. So um, the scheme here throughout all of Genesis 1 is God bringing order, right? God's Holy Spirit in the first day of creation hovering over the waters. And here in the second day, right, the waters and the chaos get split and moved and the waters and the chaos get kind of rearranged and made, made into an orderliness. And so that's going to be a theme throughout all of creation. So uh, what do we do with this devotionally? On the one hand, there is a really easy way to talk about the chaos, the chaos in our life, and to pray against that, right? God has his Holy Spirit just as much hovering over your chaos as he lives and reigns in your heart as he does the chaos back in the beginning of creation. So we can have prayers against the chaos, and as we start things, as we get new things going, you know, as we get ready to have a chaotic first Sunday in church next Sunday, I'm kind of twitching and stressed about all this. It'll be fine. Don't worry. Um, we're into the, you know, we're into this, and God's Holy Spirit is right there for us. There's all sorts of other chaotic things in our lives, and here's the promise that God's going to split it up. God's going to break it up and is going to put order over that chaos um, if we ask him to, if we allow him to, right? It's not, you know, uh, it's not that he can't, it's that, um, or that we're ultimately sovereign in this, it's that you're holding your little chaos ball so tightly and Jesus keeps trying to take it away and you keep taking it back. Stop, you know, stop grabbing and snatching, as we say to the little kids, and, and just just let God do it. The other thing is that the other, so that's one devotional move. The other devotional move here for us possibly today is to go through and have a time um, to have a prayer of thanksgiving that God has created two infinite expanses. So the sky is infinite. And I know, I know the sciencey thing. It, no, it's not. And no, neither's the ocean. But man, if you stand out there on uh, at Seaside or Astoria, or even better, if you get as far out so you can't see the shore, and you look one way and look the other way, man, that is just forever. It's infinite, right? Uh, again, the Bible's written from a human point of view, not a scientific point of view. And so that human infinite, what can you see? It's infinite. There is a time and a bit of, of moment to just sit down and enjoy and to have some prayer and to adore the God who makes the infinite. We've had some things here recently that feel infinite, 
like the infinitely long house arrest, the infinitely long masking, the infinitely long when is this stupid virus going to be over, those aren't the infinites I'm talking about because they're actually finite. They just feel infinite and soul-crushing. I'm with you. Um, but, sorry, just hit my mic. Um, different setup today. Um, but those are, the infinites I'm talking about are all of that long stretch, right? The God who's so big, he can make this infinite, infinite expanse of sky, infinite expanse of ocean, infinite expanse. Um, if you're driving up the gorge or down the gorge, uh, that line of water stretches forever, right? Especially, let's say you get past Arlington, right? Arlington on to Portland, and it just goes forever and ever and ever, right? That's the God of the infinite expanse. Or finally, um, not just the sky, but the night sky, right? And here we're going to intentionally evoke Abraham, right? Uh, out here in Battleground, the light pollution is a little better than it is in Portland. You can actually see stars, so the next calm day, go out and look up at the stars at night. That's the infinite we're talking about, and that comes close to being infinite. Um, scientifically, it comes close. Uh, it's getting bigger all the time. So, those are, there's that time to just stop and to sit in the infinite, not to feel small, but to sit in the infinite and adore the God who can create something so big, so massive, so just over the top for us. There's our devotion on day two. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you back here next time.